time of the year. No, it's not a yearly thing. All right, how do we do this? Hey, you guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Danny, and this is Coffee Break with Danny. It's that time in my life where I feel out of control, overwhelmed, and dysregulated every time I go into my makeup corner and realize I'd rather be digging for makeup out of my small caboodle than the bookshelf that I have. If you guys have been here for a while, you know how tra tra transitional, transformative, trans, basically it's, it's, it's progressed or there's been an evolution in terms of makeup. Side note, if you hear screaming, biting, licking, moaning, just shrieks, the boys are in the pool right now. Luckily, I have direct sight of them and their well-being. However, they are boys. So it's, it's gonna, it's gonna be weird. Just wanted to put that out there. But, uh, you guys know it's been, it's been weird. You know, we started off with makeup in those cubes in the background and like all the makeup fit in a, in a cube. And then each cube became two types of products. And then every cube became a category of product. Do you guys remember when all my nail polish fit into one cube, like back in the day? And then it just, did you hear that? I promise you people are alive. And it was just like, then it became the primer cube and the concealer cube and the this cube. And while I did declutter successfully at that point, I think we've slowly built it up and it is significantly less makeup than it was before. But it's now to that point where, again, I need to downsize, like for real downsize and just really know and have a grasp over what I have, what I need, what I hate, what's expired. So I hope you guys will enjoy this series. We are going to basically go in order. We're gonna do primers and we'll do foundations and we'll do concealers and we'll just kind of keep going until we check all the boxes from nail polish to lip glosses to eyeshadow. I definitely think we should have like a miscellaneous category where we do eyelashes because I still have fake lashes. Yeah, brand new fake lashes just sitting there. Really nice quality lashes when I don't even use them. Today we are going to talk about primers and basically our goal is to keep primers that we love, keep primers that are not expired, and keep primers that actually serve a purpose in our lives according to our needs now. You know, like, Maybe a primer was really awesome back in the day before my skin changed and I turned almost 40 or whatever and now my, my, my face is kind of picky. And, uh, and maybe that doesn't work anymore and I'm holding on to things. You guys do that nostalgically, you hold on to something like your jeans that still fit from high school but you know damn well you're not gonna go back to the low rise, ultra super tiny one inch zipper Britney Spears jeans. But you keep them, right? Because they still fit and you feel awesome. But are you gonna wear them again? So if I have any Britney Spears primers in this bucket, then um, then we're gonna get rid of it. So I went, I grabbed my little container over in the bookcase. It's all, it's like one of those Ikea bookcases, not too wide. There's six shelves and four of the shelves are makeup. So in one of the Muji cases, I have all of my cream blushes. These are all my cream blushes, and then these are all my primers. So today we're solely gonna focus on the primers that I own. I am a little torn because I have multiples of the same primer, so I'm like, do I keep them if they're multiples? That just means I love it. And I think at some point what happened was I kept it because I would have one in my bathroom and then one here, so when I was just getting ready, like really fast in the morning before school, I would, I would have one there and then I would have one here, but I'm like, do I really need two? If I still love it, I think I'm going to keep it, you know? All right, let's get started. Like any and all my content, any of the videos that are linked to this one will be linked down below. So if you're seeing this out of order and the foundation one's already up or the lip gloss one's already up or the eyeshadow, you know where I'm going, is already up, it'll all be listed down below, almost like a playlist. What I'm wearing, my lip color, all of that stuff, again, also listed down below. Any primers that I mention will also be listed down below. So even if I get rid of them, if they're expired, if I have maybe something not so nice to say about it, it will also be linked. So basically, your number one resource besides my company, okay, that was ridiculous, uh, is the description box. That has everything from my nail polish to my dress. Everything is listed down there. So let's get started. This is our little 
primer section from our Muji case. I still keep my makeup in Muji's because I'm a creature of habit and that's how we roll. So the first two and the first two that I want to talk about because I love, I love them. I wish these had the expiration date on them like Korean beauty products. You know how they have the, the expiration on the back? They have like the production date and the expiration date side by side. These don't, I don't know if they're expired. I mean, I've used them pretty regularly. I don't even know the difference. I don't know which one I reach for. Maybe if I email Ula Henriksen and I say, hey, this is the batch number. Sorry. Boys. <laughs> Hashtag boy mom. What does that poster say? It's like dirt with noise wrapped around it. Like that's, or noise with dirt wrapped around. Like that, that's, that, those are boys. So I have two of them. This is a very nice skincare slash primer that I use as a base product as a base, base, base primer. So this one is the first thing to touch my face if I'm using a primer. This adds a very natural glow. I don't always have to top it with foundation or concealer. Sometimes I just put it on my face if I want it to look illuminated without any glitter chunks. So I really like this one. It is skincare and I would suggest topping it off with a sunscreen, especially if you don't uh, want to put makeup on because it is a vitamin C product. If you are prone to freckles, melasma, any of those, you know, pigmentation type perks of life, then definitely top it with a sunscreen. But the Banana Bright Face Primer from Lula Henriksen is a favorite, therefore will not be getting decluttered. The Milk Makeup Blur Stick. Again, I have two and I know for sure it's because I had one in my bathroom and I had one in here. When I had time to get ready and I would get ready peacefully, I would get ready here. When I was in a hurry and I just wanted to blur my face, I'd have one in my bathroom vanity. This has been discontinued since and you're gonna hear about this a lot in these declutter videos is this product's discontinued, this product's discontinued. So you can still buy overstock of it on sources like Amazon, I think Walmart as well. Just make sure that the retailer is either Amazon and Walmart or Milk Makeup themselves. So the blur stick is a very nice option because it comes in a stick format. So wherever you have pronounced pores, it's a great option to just go smudge, 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 and then just kind of buff it out a little bit. For me, it was an asset on no makeup makeup days, on no makeup days, just period no makeup days. It's also an asset as a combo primer. I would go in with an illuminating one first, like this one, and then I top this as a blur, just primarily around my nose here, maybe the center of my forehead sometimes, and maybe the bottom of my chin sometimes. Generally speaking, I would just blur this area here. It's a great tool for days that you want your face to have sort of like a filtered look, but without putting any makeup on your face. I don't know about you, but on those days where I don't wear makeup, I touch my face and I wanna be able to touch my face. So even though I have filmed the no makeup makeup look, there are days where I have no makeup on my face and I love to touch my face. So I want it to look like I'm wearing no makeup. I want to not be wearing any makeup. And if I touch my face, I wanna make sure that I'm not gonna mess anything up. But because this has been discontinued, an exact dupe for this product by Milk Makeup is the Revolution Pro Blur Stick. So this is Revolution Makeup. It's a brand, I believe, from Europe, maybe England, London, the UK. Uh, I wanna say, yeah, from the UK. And it's huge on the Ulta website and most Ulta stores. This is a perfect dupe for it. It's the Revolution Pro Blur Stick. It looks like a little tiny deodorant. It's virtually the same product. The only difference is you can get it in three different sizes. So if you are curious, if you wanna try it out, if you want a travel size version, if you want the Costco size version, that literally looks like, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> It's seriously not that big, but it's the same product and it comes in multiple sizes. So it's a really great, it's a really great product, drugstore price, do for milk makeup since they broke our heart and comes in a variety of options. So you can either test it out, travel with it, or if you already love it, save yourself some time and get the big daddy, like Subway six inch sub size one, you know, <laughs> and you're set. So I love that I was able to find that as a replacement for milk makeup, even though I, 
think I'm pretty good on this. I'm pretty set. There are two. Wow, this is awesome. I actually feel good about myself. I thought I was gonna be here for like seven hours and be like, oh my God, primers for days. The Hourglass Mineral Veil Primer or Mineral Primer Veil. Veil Mineral Primer. Anyway, this is a primer from Hourglass. It is a luxury brand. You can get it at places like Sephora. It is a primer that has SPF 15 and it has a very silky satin finish. If you are someone that struggles with the textures of primers where they don't play nice with other products, where you've noticed that you have problems with pilling or cast, like in a picture with flash, like you have that cast. It has a special name. Cast is a part of it. I'm forgetting the other part of it. Flashback? Whatever, you know what I'm trying to say. Okay, so this might be a product that isn't necessarily your favorite. I have noticed that when I use this as a primer, as a base, before I do my makeup, I somehow appreciate and love the way my skin looks a lot. Like it makes me notice, wow, what's on my face? Because what did I use? Because what's going on? I'm glowing differently. There's no glow, there's no sparkle, there's no tint, there's no anything. It, it doesn't adjust to your skin tone. You know those products that are like, what are they, pH? pH regulating or something? No, it's just, it's a thin, why don't I just show you? It's a thin, all right, let's try that demo again because obviously I haven't pumped it in a minute. I took this to Cancun with me and so, so you can tell it's a very silky finish. It is white, but it blends in nicely. And once it gets absorbed, it leaves a very, gosh, it's impossible to describe. If you guys have ever handled like arrowroot, rice flour, if you've made mochi from scratch, that feeling you get, even cornstarch in between your fingers, that's how silky this product feels. So if you've ever had issues, and this is kind of like a random side note, if you ever had issues with primers, where you're like, gosh, I can't use that primer, it pills. I can't use that concealer, that foundation, that whatever, it pills. Usually, usually it's an interaction with whatever your moisturizer is, whatever your sunscreen is. So whatever's on your face already, it's not necessarily a you problem, it's not necessarily a primer problem or foundation, it's usually the combo of the primer and whatever your skincare is and they don't like to play nice together. So you wanna make sure that the products that you use aren't fighting each other, but also can sit nicely on top of each other without conflict, or it could even like sink into your skin. Those are like the best options. But if they are different types of finishes, or they just don't, they don't blend together, they're almost like opposite magnets, then you're gonna have a problem with the, with with that look of like the, the, the makeup is sitting on top of your face instead of it is your face, or you're gonna have the pilling, or the uh, separation, or even you could have a lot of oxidation where it changes color. So keep that in mind. So if I've, if I've mentioned a primer where you're like, oh, I can't use that when it pills, then maybe switch up your moisturizer or your sunscreen or whatever you're using and you might feel differently about a primer you've tried in the past. Okay, two more products and we're actually done. Like, is this a, is this a record short video? Like, are we setting a record here? The e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer. I talked about this when I talked about an Ulta haul and I was like, oh my gosh, this is like the best primer ever. This is a really good dupe for that putty primer from, what's the name of that brand? It's a really fancy, 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 I think Japanese brand. It has like the lavender packaging and it's like a little gold scoop and it's like super luxe. This is a really good dupe for that. This is also a very good blurring primer. But I am a creature of habit and when things come in certain packaging or presentation, as much as I love it, it's gonna take a lot for me to reach into it if I need to stick my finger in it or if I need an additional tool to get stuff out. But it's that whole like, <clears throat> gotta put my finger in there or I gotta, I gotta put my nail and scrape out a bit, a bit. It's a really nice, it's a really nice pour filling. And I hate to say filling because it sounds comedogenic, like it's like it's gonna stuff your pores and make you break out. No, it's a really nice poreless primer where it gives you that blurred effect, it gives you that filtered look. It's awesome. But if it came in a squeeze tube, oh gosh. If it came in a squeeze tube, 
it would be even more awesome. So Elf, if you're watching this, huge fan of your poreless putty primer. However, put it in a squeeze tube. This, this tub thing, you know, it's not hygienic. It's not my favorite. I get the ick, which is dumb. I know for me it's like a sensory issue, like having to stick my finger in something. And it's not so much the dip, it's getting stuff under my nails. You guys, if ever you need to recognize my body, you need to identify me. I watch way too many of these shows. If you ever need to identify my body, don't check under my nails because it's always gonna be super clean under there. I have this thing where I'm always cleaning under my, there's no evidence under there, okay? You're gonna check something, Ch check my phone history, check my call log, <laughs> check my social media, track my steps, but you're not gonna find anything under my nails because that's how, how ick I feel about it. So like every five seconds I'm like, cleaning under there. Got those little like peach, those little peach sticks, what are they called? You know what I'm saying? Those little wooden sticks I'm like, cleaning out. There's never going to be any secrets in there. Uh, but Elf, this is no secret. Put me in a squeeze tube and you are going to rise to the top, like top three favorite primers for sure. And now the last one and we're, we're done. We're, we're done with, we're done with primers. Am I talking too fast? Like what's happening? What's going on here? Something's wrong. <laughs> the one size secure the blur makeup magnet primer. I don't think I'm going to get rid of anything because I like this one. Okay. I'm on. Look, do you see me shaking? You can tell what my strong hand is. I'm left-handed. So when I'm not right hand dominant, right hand, dom right hand dominant. So like trying to squeeze this firm tube. I'm like, <laughs> okay. This primer, and I mentioned it to you guys before, is a winner for several reasons. I've tried it with several products and I don't notice that it fights back with my skincare, with my foundation, with my concealers. It doesn't fight back. It actually is very friendly and it gets along with most things that I've used. Actually, everything that I've used. I haven't ran into something where it's like rejecting it, you know? And the reason that I want to mention this uh, primer is for several reasons. If you try the hourglass, it might feel way too slippery for you. You're like, what is this? That, you know, that sensation of like rice flour, very slippery. If you don't like that, you can't get past that. That's a sensory thing. If you don't like the feeling of that like putty, putty feeling, like that waxy, almost dimethicone feeling, you can't, you can't ignore that from primers like this or primers like this. If you aren't a fan of hydrating or illuminating primers because you have oily skin, you have enlarged pores, you're just someone that's not a fan, you're not gonna like this one. Okay, this is one of those primers that's like, but we can all be friends. You know, it has just the right amount of silky texture. It has, sorry, it's this hand. It has just the right amount of silky texture. It has just the right amount of blur. You can see the difference. It doesn't blur as much but it has just the right amount of blur. So if you don't have like crazy blurring things that you need to have it, it's a good one. It's great for those of you that have oily skin because it's not illuminating and it's not super hydrating. It's comfortable to put on, but once it's on, it dries out and your skin's ready to go. It's like, what's next? Like ready to party, you know? It's ready to, for anything to get put on top. So this is a really good, I would say, all-inclusive, everybody-friendly primer, whether you have dry skin, oily skin, enlarged pores, no pores, you want to blur, you don't want to blur. It's just like, it's like a happy middle. If you're specifically super dry skin and you're looking for hydration, it's not going to do that. If you're super oily and you need to be mattified to some capacity, it's not going to do that. If you have super crazy enlarged pores and you really need that blurring effect, it's not 100% blurring. So it's just kind of somewhere in the middle. So when you're teetering in between like, well, you know, I could, I could use a little blurring, I could use a little mattify, a little hydration, just a little bit. It's sort of like the vanilla primer, if I were to say. It's like so good, but if you have a very, very big target objective, I hate when I hear ow, because that's like mom trigger, you know? <laughs> I'm like, ow is not, is not my friend. It is, it's just, it's really good for that. So if you're maybe getting into makeup, you're like, I don't know what my primer needs really are. That might be a good place to start. Or if you're blessed with good skin, you don't have much to hide, you just kind of want something to hold on to your foundation throughout the day, like good little sticky hands, a little bit of blurring, this is a good one for that. So I don't know, you guys, I wish I had more of a 
cutthroat. This is expired. I'm throwing this away. I'm throwing this out the window. No. I've really done a good job at like sticking to the primers that, that I love. So they are all recommendations of mine, but take, take what I said with a grain of salt. So if any of those like fit your category or fit your needs, like your makeup needs, then that might be something that uh, you benefit from or learn from, specifically like stuff like this. I know I recommend this a lot, but as much as I recommend it, you can't find it anymore. So if you could find this dupe, your next grocery run at Walmart, like, or yeah, Walmart or Ulta, knock yourself out. Like I said at the beginning of this video, we are gonna go through our entire collection and cover all the bases. We've started with primers, but we're gonna keep it going until we have finished. Hopefully I can do a good job at eliminating things and hopefully I will also eliminate a lot of the background noise for the next video. You know what I'm, you know what I'm saying? Cause, cause that would be really helpful. I'll make sure to list and link all these primers at uh, the end of this video. I'll make sure to list and link all these primers in the description box of this video. I'm always here to chat. Let me know what your thoughts are. If you're excited about this decluttering series, I'll make sure to start a new playlist for this declutter. But if you're interested in the old school, God, those videos were probably like seven hours long. I'll also list that playlist down below. All right, you guys, you know what to do. If you found this video useful, entertaining, and learned something, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, this coffee break is over. Bye, guys. I'm about to go some children. Just kidding. I probably shouldn't say that on the internet. I'm about to go talk to some children about boundaries and respect.